This video provides a review of the arthroscopic neuroanatomy of the shoulder and describes arthroscopic techniques for decompression. This video will be divided into four chapters. Chapter 1, Decompression of the Brachial Plexus. Chapter 2, Decompression of the Axillary Nerve at the Inferior Capsule. Chapter 3, Decompression of the Axillary Nerve Posteriorly and in the Subdeltoid Recess. And Chapter 4, Decompression of the Suprascapular Nerve. The axillary nerve is a branch of the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. It passes medial and inferior to the coracoid and winds just inferior to the subscapularis muscle belly as it enters the axillary space. With the conjoint tendon reflected inferiorly, one can appreciate the relationship of the axillary nerve and vessels and the musculocutaneous nerve to the conjoint tendon and subscapularis. A standard posterior viewing portal is created 2 cm inferior and 1 cm medial to the posterolateral edge of the acromion. The anterior and anterolateral portals are created under direct arthroscopic visualization. Indications for arthroscopic decompression include iatrogenic compression, such as after a latter J procedure, a compressive subcoracoid cyst, and adhesions. Relative contraindications include missing clinical and or radiological evidence of compression, poor visualization, inadequate technical skill, unfamiliarity with the anatomy and neuroanatomy, and general surgical risks. With the arthroscope in the anterolateral portal, Adhesions are carefully taken down bluntly and with an electrocautery device. Using a switching stick, soft tissues are carefully divided. Great care is taken to not violate the axillary artery that runs nearby the axillary nerve. The axillary nerve traverses inferior to the glenohumeral capsule to enter the quadrilateral space. As the axillary nerve courses inferior to the glenohumeral capsule, it arborizes forming several smaller branches near the long head of the triceps insertion. The posterior branch is typically responsible for posterior deltoid innervation and gives rise to a branch innervating the teres minor. A standard posterior viewing portal is used and a 7 o'clock working portal is created under direct arthroscopic visualization. Indications for arthroscopic decompression include a CAM procedure for osteoarthritis, adhesive capsulitis, axillary ganglion, and adhesions. Relative contraindications include missing clinical and or radiological evidence of compression, poor visualization, inadequate technical skill, unfamiliarity with the anatomy and neuroanatomy, and general surgical risks. With the arthroscope and the posterior portal, a monopolar device through the 7 o'clock portal is used to divide the inferior capsule. Great care is used to ensure that the device does not plunge into the axillary recess to cause damage to the axillary nerve. After the capsule is opened, blunt dissection is performed until the axillary nerve is encountered. The nerve is then carefully and bluntly dissected from adhesive tissues until it is adequately liberated. The more anterior branch of the axillary nerve wraps around the humeral neck and innervates the middle and anterior deltoid. A cutaneous branch also usually arises from the posterior branch and serves the joint capsule and the lateral shoulder. The nerve is typically located 5 to 6 centimeters from the edge of the acromion laterally. Multiple viewing and working portals are utilized, including the posterior, lateral, and anterolateral portals. Indications for arthroscopic decompression include adhesions, a compressive cyst, and quadrilateral space syndrome. Relative contraindications include missing clinical and or radiological evidence of compression, 
Poor visualization, inadequate technical skill, unfamiliarity with the anatomy and neuroanatomy, and general surgical risks. With the arthroscope and the posterior portal, a mechanical shaver is used through the anterolateral and lateral portals to debride the subacromial bursa and any adhesions. Being cognizant of the inferior depth one is working at is important in avoiding iatrogenic injury to the axillary nerve. The viewing and working portals can and should be alternated as indicated for appropriate visualization and instrument trajectory. A combination of blunt dissection and electrocautery is utilized to release adhesions and connective fascial bands. Once the nerve is encountered, it is bluntly dissected from adhesive tissues until it is adequately liberated. The suprascapular nerve originates from the upper trunk of the brachial plexus. It courses deep to the omohyoid and trapezius muscles before traveling to the suprascapular notch with the suprascapular artery. At the suprascapular notch, the suprascapular nerve passes underneath the transverse scapular ligament and provides two motor branches to the supraspinatus while the suprascapular artery courses over the ligament. The nerve then passes deep to the supraspinatus through the spinoglenoid notch and it terminates in the muscle belly of the infraspinatus. At the spinoglenoid notch, the suprascapular nerve can be constricted by the inferior transverse scapular ligament or by a ganglion cyst. At the suprascapular notch, the suprascapular nerve faces entrapment by the transverse scapular ligament and the shape of the notch itself. A lateral viewing portal and two working portals, the nevisor and anterolateral portals, are used for suprascapular nerve decompression. Indications for arthroscopic decompression include spinoglenoid notch cyst, spinoglenoid ligament hypertrophy, transverse scapular ligament hypertrophy, suprascapular notch cyst, supraglenoid cyst, and paralabral cyst. Relative contraindications include missing clinical and or radiological evidence of compression, poor visualization, inadequate technical skill, unfamiliarity with the anatomy and neuroanatomy, and general surgical risks. With the arthroscope in the lateral portal, a mechanical shaver through the anterolateral portal is utilized to debride bursal tissue and create adequate visualization for creation of the nevisor portal. A mechanical shaver through the anterolateral portal is utilized to debride adhesions and fascial connecting bands. Care must be taken to not disrupt the corcoclavicular ligaments. Once the nevisor portal has been created, a switching stick is placed to elevate the anterior soft tissues to create a working space. An arthroscopic biter through the nevisor portal can then be used to divide the ligament. At this point, the suprascapular nerve is best appreciated and is bluntly released from adherent tissue until adequate decompression has been achieved. Viewing through the lateral portal, a mechanical shaver is introduced through the posterior portal to debride bursa and any adhesions. The scapular spine is a consistent landmark that can be used for reorientation. Cyst material may be encountered in the case of a spinoglenoid notch cyst once encountered and entered. The cyst is completely debrided using a mechanical shaver. After careful debridement, the suprascapular nerve is encountered. The nerve is bluntly released from adherent tissue until adequate decompression has been achieved.
Following nerve decompression surgery, post-operative rehabilitation begins with placing the patient in a standard sling for one to two weeks. During this time, passive range of motion of the shoulder, along with other exercises, are initiated. Active assisted and active range of motion are also initiated to the level of the patient's tolerance. At four to six weeks postoperatively, resisted strengthening of the periscapular and rotator cuff musculature is initiated. Notably, overall recovery time is dependent on the preoperative chronicity of nerve compression and the extent of muscular atrophy. In cases of nerve compression with additional pathology, such as a rotator cuff tear, the postoperative rehabilitation is adjusted based on the associated pathology. The following outcome scores for suprascapular, axillary, and brachial plexus nerve decompression all represent the unpublished personal results of the senior author. After suprascapular nerve decompression, there was an overall improvement for all patient reported outcome scores. The population consisted of seven patients with isolated nerve compression and 11 with associated rotator cuff tear. Average follow up was 4.4 years. Following axillary nerve decompression, there was an overall improvement for all patient reported outcome scores. This population consisted of 63 patients with an average follow-up of 4.2 years. Notably, the vast majority of these patients underwent nerve release in conjunction with comprehensive arthroscopic management of glenohumeral osteoarthritis. These outcome scores reflect this associated pathology. Finally, 14 patients who underwent brachial plexus decompression also reported overall improvement for all outcome scores. Average follow-up was 3.5 years. This concludes the arthroscopic neuroanatomy of the shoulder with arthroscopic techniques for decompression.